And today is secret number seven. We have been on this journey of unpacking what are the seven secrets to living bold. And we've already established so much that this is really simple, stupid, hard. Hashtag. And you need to bring a tissue. Hashtag. And you need to hold on to your hair because it's all so good and so simple and yet hard to do. But today we're gonna land on one that I think is, again, gonna probably lean towards a hold on to your hair hashtag um, because it is going to give you the fuel for your engine. So all of these other secrets, if we're using an analogy, is like we're giving you all the pieces to a vehicle, right? We give you your tire, we give you the shell, we give you the wheel, and today is going to be the gas in your tank to fly. So today's secret, secret number seven, is to get loud. Get loud. What do I mean by get loud? Immediately, those of you who don't see yourselves as loud people, you're like, uh, that, I don't know. You know. I think there's already too many people that are posting all of their opinions on social media. Or maybe when I say get loud, you're like, man, we all got an opinion. Who needs mine? Or Man, the, you know, our world is so loud right now, Julia. Why in the world do we need to be getting loud? Here's where we need to be getting loud. I'm going to be honest. We need to be getting loud on our knees in prayer. And here's what I would like to propose to you today. I believe that most of us, that our dreams are not loud enough, that our prayers is not loud enough, that our visions are not loud enough. And what's happened in our world, and especially these last couple of years, as the global crisis continues and actually increases in so many ways, is that the world around us is getting louder and louder and louder. And so what we're starting to pay attention to, therefore, are, of course, the loud sounds around us. And we're starting to buy into the fear and the worry and the doubt and the narrative that is at play. And I am here today to remind you that the secret to living bold as lions is to get loud. Get louder on your knees in prayer because I believe that it's in this still small quiet place that we're actually going to be given our divine revelation in which to build our lives upon, in the midst of the noise around us. But if I'm so tuned into the noise around me, then all of a sudden I'm gonna start bowing my knee to fear, I'm gonna start bowing my knee to addiction, I'm gonna start bowing my knee to anxiety, I'm gonna start bowing my knees to the news because it's so loud. And yes, we obviously can see what is going on around us, but have you simply found yourself asking lately, but what does God say about this? But what does God's word say about fear? What does God's word say about anxiety? What does God's word say about addiction? What does God say to me about my life and this new year? Whatever that answer is going to be, what I would like to propose to you today is get that thing louder. Is your faith louder than your fear? Are your dreams louder than the disappointment? Is your vision for what God's given you louder than the doubt or the impossibilities? Is the hope for which he's come and is and forever will be louder than the world and where it is in its current affair? And if you're human, you're probably sitting there going, hmm, preach. Maybe, maybe that world has gotten a little bit louder. Yes, it has. But here's where we are instructed in the word to be building from. It says in Acts 2, we all know this, but for the sake of laying this foundation of where we're going today, Acts 2 verse 17 says, This is what I will do in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will experience dreams from God. When I talk about that 2023 is a year of dreaming, and I wrote the book, Dream, I Dare You, I meant it when I used the word dream, and it is not what we think about dreaming, it's actual dreams from God, from heaven, from revelation. Why? 
because we're going to need to be a people who can build from revelation, which means I need my revelation to be loud. I need my faith to be loud, to lean in on those times of fear. I need my, my dreams to be loud so that when the doubt starts to come in, that I can anchor in to a voice that must declare, I will not bow my knee to doubt. I will not bow my knee to fear. I will not bow my knee to anxiety because fill in the blank. What is the dream that God has given you? What is the revelation that he's given you? What does the word of God say? Because we have to anchor into that. And then we need to get louder than the things going on around us. If we continue to explore scriptures around this, I'm reading Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Here, it's really interesting. He says, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith. Interesting that he says that. Because I have heard of your faith. What does that mean? He's actually seeing and hearing testimonies of people walking out the revelation that God has given them. That's huge. He says, for this reason, because I've heard of your faith in Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Another word we could use for that is dreams. He's given you revelation, wisdom, and dreams. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What does that mean? That he's actually granted you purpose, meaning, a why, a reason. He's commissioned us to bring heaven to earth. Why? Because we have a job to do. So often we think that, oh, the end times are coming. I'm not here to predict when the end times are coming. What I am saying is that we are supposed to be preparing the bride. We're supposed to be preparing the way for Jesus. He's already saved us. He's going to come and take us to eternity and beyond forever with him. But when he returns, he wants to come to a ready church, to a ready bride. So he's saying, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope in which he has called you, what are the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the great, the working of the great might that he worked in Christ. What does this mean? So many things. What this means is that in these days, he is downloading divine revelation and wisdom and insight and dreams to his people. For the point that we would walk this out and make this side of earth look more like heaven in preparation for Jesus' return. He's coming to a church that has been preparing and readying themselves by actually making this side of earth look like heaven. That is now our commission. So what does this mean? That means, this is why I'm going to get so jazzed, that means I actually need to get louder. I need to get louder in my prayer. I need to see what's going on around me. That's part of this battle. I need to see the fear. I need to see the anxiety. I need to see the worry and the destruction and the addiction and anything that doesn't line up in word. I need to see it first. And then I need to be able to lean in and get louder than what I see. I need my faith to be louder than the fear. I need my dreams to be louder than the doubt. I need my revelation to be louder than the anxiety. I need my belief to be louder than the addiction. I need to lean in and I need to agree with what heaven is doing in my prayer so that in theory, as I walk this out, secret number six, as I take bold action, that my action is in alignment with my prayer. You know, it's interesting how this happens real time is even with my eight-year-old. He um, would admit that he doesn't like the dark falling asleep, which is so funny because my daughter loves it dark. She loves it being dark. She goes to sleep. She can, it cannot be dark enough. She wears a mask. She has a blanket that covers the bottom of her bunk bed, right? Like she's in the back far corner. She loves it dark. Malachi, on the other hand, really likes it to be light. I mean, if he could have all the lights on in the room as he's falling asleep, he would do much better. I was actually the same as a kid too. I did not like the dark. 
Here's how we've been leaving him in this, though. Lately, he's been able to say that, and he's afraid of the noises. He's afraid of the sounds that are going on in his room, which makes it makes us human, right? Just like any of us. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of the noises that I'm hearing. I'm afraid of social media. I'm afraid of what I'm seeing on the news. I'm afraid of what I'm seeing in my community. I'm afraid of what I'm seeing on a global level. Like, that's part of this whole process. So we said, now, okay, totally. What are you hearing? What are you noticing? Okay, great. Then we've actually asked him, what is God doing in the room? What is God doing in the room that he actually wants you to lean in and to partner with him in the sound that he is making? What is the sound of heaven? Because here's what I believe in our journey. None of this is surprising God. None of this. Now, is he in charge of every little thing? Yes, he's in charge of all of these, but he's not in control of how people are walking this out. He will not control us. But he does know how all of this works, and he is a God that has to be okay with all of it. Why? Because he knows how the story ends. This is what builds hope in the in-between. This is what builds loud prayer is because I know that I'm anchored into a God that though he's not in control of everybody and how all of this looks, he's in charge of the whole thing and the end game is we win, which means he's living from victory. So should I. Which also means my prayers should also come from victory. My prayers should actually be a prayers of victory from revelation, from divine moments with God that I've actually had intimacy in talking with him. So as I go to walk this out in bold faith and bold action, that I'm anchored into a loud prayer as opposed to the loud narrative around me. This is the secret. This is the secret sauce right here. It's number seven. It's the cherry on top. It's the gas in our tank. Why? Because it is how we fight our battles is in prayer. And not just small prayers, though those are important to God, all of them, right? Whether we have an earache or one of our kids is sad because they're disappointed or because on a macro level we see our global economy, economy doing things that aren't really in alignment with what the Word of God says. Our prayers need to make it hard for God to fulfill. When was the last time we prayed such a big prayer that we put so much vulnerability in it that we prayed like it mattered? In our last secret, we talked about taking bold action, right? The, the idea that act like it depends on you, pray like it depends on God. And for me, I've had to really lean in and have been super convicted even in my own prayer life lately because I'm either praying really small, unattached prayers that sound good but don't evoke any boldness within me. Or I also lean and go, yeah, but I'm afraid to pray bold prayers because I've been so disappointed in the past. Well, I was actually anchored in the outcome. I wasn't anchored in who I was praying to. And so our prayer time is going to be a reflection of also, way back to a couple secrets ago, where we're going to need some healing, where we're going to need some revelation, and where we're ultimately going to need to be taking bold action from. That's the point of the prayer, is it's going to continue to reveal to us the heart work that is so needed to be dreamers who bring heaven to earth. It's in our prayer time, it's in these moments of getting loud with God that we will actually hear the things that he wants us to be hearing, whether it's looking at our own heart, whether it's looking at our communities or our families or the things that he goes, hey, that doesn't have my name on it, or that doesn't look like heaven, or that's what not what heaven is doing right now. That's the point of this. And so what I want to encourage you in closing out our seven secret series, and as you consider where you're at in your own life and where our, our world is, is that I don't want to see you shy away in prayer any longer. I want you to actually see it as a weapon. It is our tool to have more intimacy with God, to actually tap into what God is doing, to see past just the narrative and the noise around us, but to see at greater revelation of what heaven is doing and then to lean in proactively to where we can feel the fire within us because as we start to pray, we start to notice, oh God, you are on this or I will pray like my life depends on it. Because come to find out, it does. And not only does your life depend on it, your neighbor's life depends on it and your children's lives depend on it. Our prayers matter to God. Therefore, I want to encourage you today that if the fear the anxiety, the stress, the worry, the addiction is loud. I want to encourage you to get louder. Let your faith arise. Let your boldness arise. Let the joy and the love within you arise and be louder than anything else. Because as that gets louder, it will draw in your attention 
And ultimately, whatever has your attention will have your life. In closing, again, let me just remind you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. May you know that this is given to you already. He's given you the gift of wisdom, the revelation, and now he's calling you into a hope to see things at a deeper level, to hear things at a deeper level, and to anchor yourself in so much so that the revelation within you gets louder. Get louder on your knees. This is where we fight our battles. This is where we begin the journey of bringing heaven to earth. This is where we then can almost work backwards in the process as we continue to take bold actions and we get quiet in the meditative states and, and we're doing all the other things, all the other secret sauce that I gave you, that we actually partner with what heaven is doing in our prayer time and we get louder. These, my friends, are the seven secrets that will truly change your life at a micro and macro level. They will be ones that you need to probably rinse and repeat over and over and over again. They will be ones that you need to probably come and renew your mind and your heart on a regular basis. So I encourage you to rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. I encourage you to do a few push-ups when it's hard. I encourage you to acclimate when after it's been hard. I encourage you to lean in, to dream on, because the world is waiting. It's waiting for your lion. It's waiting for your bold. It's waiting for the dreams that God has given you to come up out of you so we can see the world around us look more like heaven on this side of eternity.